You are unique. Your eyes cast a warm brown glow. Your voice carries a soft tone. Your nose creases when you smile. But the things that make you unique can also be used to track you. And in China, your appearance, the technology you use, and the sound of your voice are all types of information the Chinese government collects. The scale of this surveillance and the infrastructure supporting it are larger and more elaborate than previously known. For over a year, the New York Times has analyzed more than a hundred thousand government bidding documents. They spanned two decades and were collected and shared exclusively with us by Chinaphile, a digital magazine published by the Asia Society. In these bidding documents, government agencies from across the country detail what surveillance products and services they need, from phone trackers to equipment used to collect iris scans and DNA samples. These documents explain the strategic thinking behind the purchases, and invite companies to bid for project contracts. Together, they reveal China's ambition in collecting vast amounts of sensitive personal data. From the local to national level, China aims to gather as much information as possible on its citizens, centralize this data, and use it to maintain authoritarian rule over its entire population. Let's start with the cameras. The foundation of China's surveillance state. There's a lot of them. Analysts estimate that over half of the world's nearly one billion surveillance cameras are in China. These cameras surveil and store the images of all who cross their paths. A bidding document from Fujian Province in the country's southeast. Details the police's plan to improve their facial analysis system. It reveals just how much data their facial recognition cameras are capturing, so much so that they required a database 20 times as large. In this case, the system detects faces from video feeds, and stores 2,000 images of those faces every day. Police keep them for six months. There are 7,000 video feeds in this Fujian system, so that's 2.5 billion facial images stored at any given time. All those images are for just one province in China. To put that in context, that's three times bigger than one of the largest U.S. government facial recognition databases, which is run by Homeland Security. Throughout China, authorities are highly strategic about where they place cameras. Dozens of documents show that police detail the locations and precise viewing angles for the cameras. For example, there are instructions for a camera's placement on the northwest side of this apartment building in Beijing, and across the street from this kindergarten in the city of Jiaxing. Police don't just watch from the outside either; they want to put cameras inside the lobbies of these hotels. Including at this franchise location of American hotel brand Days Inn, the hotel's front desk manager told the Times that the camera does not have facial recognition capabilities and is not feeding videos into the police network. One document from the town of Xichao in Guangdong Province reveals the philosophy of local officials as they aim for maximum surveillance. They've determined that cameras should go in places where people fulfill their most common needs. The document lists coordinates for camera positions. They match locations where people shop, where they live, where they learn, and travel. To take advantage of all this footage, police around China rely on software to analyze and extract more information. State media promotes the software's ability to identify a person's race and ethnicity, the color of their clothes, and whether they're wearing a mask or glasses. Documents show this technology can search a person's image in existing databases for a match. These search results often contain more specific information about the person, like their national ID number, name, sex, and permanent address. 
While this type of technology is readily available, the documents show the government doesn't think it's being used widely enough. In one, China's top police agency complains that the analytical capabilities need to be better and are too decentralized. The government is determined to not only fix these consolidation issues, but to branch into new and more invasive surveillance technologies. While cameras track you in public, much of your private life is on your phone. Your location, the apps you have, the things you say online. The government is using all of this information to monitor you without you even knowing. Police use phone trackers to help connect your digital life to your physical location. Our investigation found a dramatic expansion of their use across China. Sometimes the trackers are invisible, hidden within cameras. Others look like Wi-Fi routers. Here's how authorities put this technology to work. Your phone is constantly searching for the strongest available network signals. Some trackers, known as IMSI catchers, imitate strong cellular signals, luring your phone's connection before capturing its unique identifying information. Other trackers, like Wi-Fi sniffers, lie in wait on public Wi-Fi networks, intercepting and analyzing your phone's outbound communications. Since these trackers can be installed throughout a city, authorities can use them to map out a phone's movements. Let's say you post something online that the government finds incendiary. Police can go to social media companies and find out your username, phone number, and your device ID. They can then look up that device ID to see what the trackers have captured. This way, police can find out where you've been and where they might be able to find you. These trackers can also exploit weak security practices and might be able to screen the apps you've installed. And those apps can say a lot about you. For example, police from a county in Guangdong bought phone trackers and hope they can use them to detect which phones have a Uyghur to Chinese dictionary app. Users of the app are likely part of the Uyghur ethnic minority, a group that is heavily surveilled and oppressed by the government. In 2019, a New York Times journalist walked around a city in Xinjiang, where most Uyghurs live. There, he found 38 Wi-Fi sniffers in just one neighborhood. We traced one of the earliest phone tracker purchases to Shandong province in 2015. Seven years later, according to our analysis, all 31 of mainland China's provinces and regions have them. Phone trackers are powerful tools on their own. But here's what happens when you combine them with other data. These are internal product presentations we obtained from MegV one of China's biggest surveillance contractors. MegV's technology compiles various types of personal data from mobile devices, cameras, and other sources. MegV told the Times its aim is to make communities safer and not, quote, about monitoring any particular group or individual. But this product is already being used by authorities and can display a person's movements, clothing, vehicles, mobile device information, and social connections. It shows us the type of dossier that authorities could generate for anyone. But we found that the pursuit of your personal data goes even further to the biology of what makes you who you are. This is the next frontier of surveillance in China. The government is actively collecting voice prints, iris scans, and DNA samples from its people and maintains that the primary use of this material is to track criminals. Chinese media often promote these efforts, but the documents repeatedly show that police are gathering troves of material from everyday citizens too. Like in the city of Zhongshan, here a document reveals that police are adding devices to record audio from at least a 300-foot radius around their street cameras. The document outlines their plan to use voice recognition software to analyze the audio and add people's voice prints to a database. The police hope that combining voice recognition systems with facial recognition cameras will help them identify targets faster. 
But since your voice, much like your appearance, alters over time, our investigation shows Chinese authorities are starting to collect personal identifiers that are less likely to change over time, such as iris patterns. One document reveals that in Xinjiang, where millions of Uyghurs live, a government contractor built a database that can hold iris samples of up to 30 million people, enough to cover Xinjiang's entire population. We discovered this same contractor is now building large iris databases across the rest of the country. Documents show that the Chinese government is collecting another type of sensitive biometric data from broad segments of the population. DNA from men. Authorities can use genetic tracing to catalog entire generations of men, so a database built today will be useful far into the future. China says it uses these genetic databases to solve crimes. Criminal investigations around the world also rely on genetic information for this same reason. Why chromosome DNA is passed down from father to son. Given a genetic sample from an unknown male suspect, investigators can compare the man's Y DNA to samples already present in their databases. A match indicates a relationship along paternal lines and helps pinpoint the suspect's family history and geographic ancestry. Because of privacy concerns, many countries limit DNA collection to just criminals and suspects. But our analysis shows China stands out in its ambition to build ever larger databases of male DNA. We identified the earliest effort in Henan province in 2014. Today, male DNA databases exist in at least 25 out of mainland China's 31 provinces and regions. The logic behind this ever-expanding campaign is clear. A bidding document from Gansu province points out that as populations and family lineages grow, so too will the value of male DNA collection. In the same document, the police describe their objective this way. Do not miss a single family in each village. Do not miss a single man in each family. From faces to DNA profiles, iris scans to voice prints, the Chinese government is consolidating vast quantities of unique personal data with one ultimate goal, to build a comprehensive profile for each citizen accessible anytime, anywhere, up and down the ranks of the government. This sweeping surveillance effort lays the groundwork for even more advanced methods of control. The documents show that the state is even working towards predicting potential threats before they materialize. It is building a future in which mass surveillance supports authoritarian rule. And it's unlikely to stay in China. Hi, this is Mu Yi, one of the producers of this video. Our team spent over a year analyzing more than 100,000 government bidding documents to reveal how China's surveillance state is seeking sensitive personal data at an unprecedented scale. We also obtained internal presentations from a security contractor and reviewed police manuals and state propaganda. We'll have more coverage of China's invasive surveillance efforts including how officials are trying to predict the future to stop threats before they even materialize. You can see our ongoing coverage at the link on the screen.